is your opinion of these serpent deities? Like, why are they connected to the serpent? Is it, do you think it's some ancient race or is it more symbolic or what is your take on it? I think it's more symbolic. Okay. So you don't think there were actual like humanoid beings with uh, serpent tails? Serpent tails. <laughs> no. I, I don't know how that would work. I'm not a scientist. Um, so what I is the think... serpent, like what is the serpent a symbol of for you? Wisdom. Okay. They were always associated with wisdom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and knowledge, the art of healing. Mm -hmm. They also represented freedom, especially for the women. Mm -hmm. You know, the women serpents had a lot of power. Mm -hmm and independent thought and their own desires, which they were able to act upon, mm -hmm. at least until society yeah. closed in and cut off their ability to make their own decisions and mm -hmm. um, live life the way they wanted. Their, I think that's really why we have those tales of these super beautiful women, mm -hmm. but then their endings are never clear. Yeah, yeah. Or it's a really sad ending. Yeah. Like it cannot be a happy ending. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because we've been taught that they're evil. The serpent is evil. Yeah. And. I don't think they were. I think there was a war for supremacy. Mm -hmm. And their side, unfortunately, lost. Yeah. But not all and cultures like, view them as evil, right? Like, there are some cultures, like, especially the Asian cultures, that still, like, you know, venerate the, the serpent and the dragons, right? Yes. Um, in in Southeast Asia, especially, they're still venerated in India mm -hmm. um, and in some places in North Africa and even in Syria and Turkey, you know, they, they're still acknowledged. Mm -hmm. And that's in spite of complete change in thought and religion, they still haven't completely faded. Mm -hmm. Which is why in Turkey, the legend of the Shamaran is known. Yeah. And she's still idolized. Yeah. And um, Astarte is still known in certain regions. So they are still acknowledged as having the power and beauty and wisdom. Well, at the same time, we're told that they're evil. And it was a good thing that they lost. And, and what do you think about this? Like in, in many uh, ancient artworks, uh, we find these two serpents, like the caduceus, you know, or the, the symbol. Yes. Like, what do you think about that? What does it mean? To me, it's um, that particular symbol is really Enki and Inkersog. Oh, okay. The male and the female serpent. Mm -hmm. And once again, it's associated with life and with healing. Mm. So you've got that acknowledgement that whoever those beings were, they were responsible for keeping the humans alive, <laughs> teaching them how to yeah. heal themselves and how to stay alive. Um, what's interesting is with, for example, the Shamaran. Mm -hmm. She is the serpent queen. Mm -hmm. So she's also depicted as half human, half serpent, who falls in love with a human. Mm -hmm. 
and she lets him come into her lair. She teaches him how to heal because the humans at that point so she teaches him the art of healing mm. and he goes back up mm. and it becomes known to the king that he possesses these skills and this knowledge now the king gets very very ill mm. and somehow either he or a wily old counselor decide that the only way that the king can live is if he eats shamaran. Oh. So they persuade that boy, that man, to go back down and kill her and bring her back up so that she can get cooked and eaten. And he does it, he betrays her because he's promised the king's daughter, he's promised, you know. Oh, it's always well, like betrayal, like the human betrayal in these ancient myths and legends, right? Yeah. I mean, and it's the serpent women who get betrayed time and time again. Yeah, I mean, it's the Little Mermaid, right? Mm -hmm. Like also, she gets, like in the original version, yeah. she gets betrayed. So it's like, it's so strange how yeah. the humans um, like are always like the villains of these stories. Yeah, so we still have to acknowledge that we somehow did them wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if they seemed so much more advanced yeah. than us, and so they were scary, we still did them wrong. We still betrayed them. Yeah. yeah. And with the Javanese story of the Little Mermaid, because there's a Javanese mermaid, Nayalara Kidul, Oh, I don't know. She also, well, she, it's the same story, but it's in Java, in Indonesia. Oh, okay. So she's the daughter of the king of the sea. She falls in love with the prince. Mm -hmm. They get married, but he has quite a large harem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other women are very, very jealous of her. Mm. So they turn him against her. Okay. But unlike the little mermaid that we know, she didn't jump into the sea and die. <laughs> she went back to her father and uh, proceeded to exact revenge. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Big storms. Oh. And even until relatively recent times, if a fisherman or a swimmer drowns, they'll say, well, that's Lara Kidu. Oh. Getting her revenge. Okay. I uh, I have no idea about this. That's cool. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a better ending than, you yeah. know. At least she's turning a into bubbles. Yes. Yes. Well I, but but in the in the Anderson like fairy tale, like she turns into one of the air nymphs, which I love, like this ending, like it's too dark as, as some of the yeah yeah some of the versions is very dark isn't it yeah, yeah. but so you think that the the serpent goddesses and the the fish goddesses or these like mermaid type goddesses are all like interlinked it's yeah symbolism. they're interlinked i think that i think that they love jewelry uh-huh uh, they're always depicted really bedecked in jewels and gems. I think that the way their the way their skirts were made um, it shimmered. Oh. If you look at Thai or Cambodian or Chinese silk, it shimmers as you walk oh, so and you can have of like a serpent garden. yes um, garden. and these are countries that have the strong serpent tradition and you still have that sort of shape oh. where it accentuates the waist and the hip and then it goes right down into yeah. the ankles so that you have to take small steps oh okay 
and you can almost look like you're slithering as you walk. Yeah. So a lot of authors and researchers say that the serpent, dragon, fish, it's all interchangeable. It's the same civilization. And in, in the 1500s, in Europe, you had the Emperor Sigismund, mm -hmm. who formed the Imperial Order of the Dragon Court. Mm -hmm. And he and the other members of the Dragon Court claimed that they were descended from Queen Sobek Neferu of Egypt, oh. that she formed the original Dragon Court. Oh. And of course, Sobek is the crocodile god. Mm -hmm. So you got that dragon, serpent, crocodile. Yes. Now everybody knows of Isis, but I think the older goddess was Nyet, Neth. Mm -hmm. And she is the mother of Sobek. Okay. She also is represented with serpents. Uh, Sobek. He was the writer goddess, right? Like the one who wrote first? A lot like Thoth, yes. Yes. So once again, you've got knowledge mm -hmm. and you've got... Do you have healing? Is she... I don't think she's healing. Hathor was healing. Mm -hmm. So you've got Hathor, the mother, uh, the goddess of childbirth and healing, and you've got... Yeah. Yes, the goddess and of she's, knowledge and writing and... Yes. Mm -hmm. The mother of Sobek, who is the crocodile. Yeah. And the protector of the king's line. So it's all connected. It is all connected. Um, Sobek Nefru supposedly had a court on the banks of a lake infested with crocodiles. They've got the temple to Sobek with. Um, a lot of crocodile eggshells. So those crocodiles were actually lovingly fed. But so. Um, okay, so we have the crocodile, and you said in in ancient China, the the Fuxi and Nuba, uh, the the two like progenitor gods. Uh, do you think because I know that their picture like is kind of like they look like the Caduceus also, right? Like they're yes. Like, serpents the uh, same tails are entwined entwined tails uh it just makes me wonder if these like serpent progenitors have something to do with the double helix of the dna because it's it's so similar you know if you look at it the symbol is like do you think the symbolism of 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 the serpents could tie into the dna i think so i think think this was because if they're the ones who created life then yes our, that's our dna yeah and i think that was the easiest way to try to communicate to humans yeah yeah they were trying to tell us mm -hmm. but we definitely lacked the understanding of what it was they were trying to say yeah or do you think it could represent some kind of a modification of the DNA? Like that maybe, you know, it somehow ended up to, to be this double helix, but maybe it looked differently. Like maybe there was some kind of an alteration of that the Anunnaki created a different... Well, we know from the stories of the Anunnaki that they, um, Enki and Nikarsak did actually experiment for a long time. Mm -hmm. There were many generations of babies born that they looked nothing like us. They didn't think like us. They couldn't perform as we did. Mm -hmm. And so there was a long period of experimentation. Yeah, so it seems and like... You would guess a lot of tinkering with the DNA as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once Enki entered into war with his brother, who com commanded the Sky Forces, he needed an army. Yeah. 
So he needed soldiers that would fight and not just just follow orders, but that could actually think for themselves a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so think he like, like him, right? Like mm -hmm. like this mirror kind of yeah. So he made modifications. Mm -hmm. And I think those modifications brought about the reason why we are willing to go to war for reasons that just don't make sense. Yes. And why, why, why the wars for God, right? Or for yes. like your God? It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen the God. How do we know he exists? But we're willing to go and fight and die. Yeah. For that God. Yeah. So that that would have been Enki's modifications. Okay. But Enki is supposed to be and the guy, right? <laughs> not all. Yeah. Not one hundred percent good. Yeah. You know, in that they were human. Yeah. They all had their own mo motivations and their desires and. And then yeah. At once he started doing the modifications, I think he he decided that he wanted humans to be able to think and reason and choose for themselves. Yeah. So I think he went through his own learning process. Yeah. And you know, they the first humans fulfilled their basic needs, they needed workers, and I think him and in Prasak thought, you know, this isn't right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's give them a little bit more. Yeah. Let's give them the ability to think and reason for themselves. Yeah. Which and then it was good idea. <laughs> then it was his son Ningazida who took it even further and really oh. advocated. And Ningizida is another type of god that looks like the Caduceus. Like again, like yes. he like the two serpents. Yeah, he took over from his father. He was the next serpent god. It's so interesting, right? Like how these different cultures like all depict the gods in a similar way and with the serpent symbolism. It's so I know. interesting. Like everywhere you find the serpents, it's it's fascinating because it all does it does really tie together mm -hmm. so there was one ancient civilization mm -hmm. that these tales probably came from yes and i do think that they did spread out throughout the ancient world yes yes so we do have different some different tales some different goddesses and gods Mm -hmm. but they all share a common ancestry and that would have been like i find it fascinating that they all link to the idea of the tree of life or the world tree and this, this multi-dimensional world right so mm -hmm. like, let's just say if maybe they were some like other dimensional beings these serpent gods or beings that came yeah. from other realms and because we still don't know the the full extent of their capabilities yes yeah. what could they actually do yeah. and um i think for the most part the ones that are venerated were good mm -hmm. i think they they had the power to be really uh, evil or really good and i think the ones that we admire mm -hmm were benevolent towards humans. Mm 